Hello, I'm Helen Bledsoe. I'm flutist of Music Fabrique, an ensemble for contemporary music based in Cologne. And I'm going to talk about circular breathing today on the flute. Circular breathing on the modern flute is not for the faint of heart, but it's something that any flutist can do who is of intermediate or advanced level. All that you need is a time commitment, 10 to 15 minutes a day, a lot of perseverance, and a beginner's mind. The first stages of learning circular breathing have to do with embouchure development. Because what you're going to do is to find a place in your mouth to store air. There is no correct place in your mouth to store air. Many people do it in their cheeks. More people, um, when they work in the lower register, tend to use more the bottom part of the mouth beneath the tongue. Now the first thing to do, if you're going for the blowfish look, is to really go for the blowfish look. Looks ridiculous, but it's very practical. And once you've got that, always going for the maximum amount possible, try to refine the center of your lips, your actual embouchure. The more refined you can get at this stage, the easier it will be for you down the road. The next step is learning to inflate and deflate your cheeks while playing normally. You see in the middle register, they'll move um, a moderate amount. When you play in the upper register, you can move a great deal. And when you play in the lower register, they will hardly move at all. You'll find more of the movement. Try to do more of the, the sort of swallowing, making space at the base of your tongue kind of movement. It's best when you're very, very first starting out is to perhaps choose a neutral note like this G, be natural to get you started. Your next step is to challenge yourself to try to play with the air that's only been stored in your mouth, either in your cheeks or at the back of your throat. And it can look something like this. You can practice this without the flute by spitting, is pretending that you're spitting water out making a little fountain. Robert Dick even suggests practicing uh, seventh chords. of air, but you're not going for length right now. You just need the coordination of being able to squeeze air out of your mouth and form an embouchure at the same time. The next step will be to use the air that's in your mouth while playing and make a brief inhalation at the same time. This you can also practice without the flute. Make a little fountain of air while sniffing in. And on the flute it'll sound something like this. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. So far we've finished the first phase, which is learning to store air in your mouth while forming an embouchure and while playing normally. The next step requires coordination. Coordination of using the air that's been stored in your mouth to equalize the pressure and speed of that air with the air that's coming from your lungs. This can be done uh, without the flute as well. One can try this with a glass of water and a straw.
you need to do. It's a very careful operation where the air that's stored inside your mouth has to have equal pressure to the air that is coming up from your lungs. And that's the trick. When you've closed off your mouth to play with the air in your cheeks, you need to open the back of your throat where it's been stopped very gradually. And the tongue will help you to do this. You can push the base of the tongue gently against the edge of your throat, the back of the edge of your throat, with this kind of motion, and that helps to push the remaining air in your cheeks out and equalize the pressure in your mouth and your um, air passage. This is not an easy thing to do at first. You get a lot of bumps and, and thuds along the way. It's usually what you hear at first. And that is a result of possibly too much tongue movement. Um, if you move the front of the tongue too much, you will hear the thrust of sound and the change of color. It could also be that you're not equalizing the um, pressure from the air, the speed of the air that's coming out, and the speed of the air the speed of the air that's coming up from your lungs, and the speed of the air that's going out of your mouth. To do this, it's easier to control, of course, small bursts of air. So it's a good idea not to wait until all the air in your cheeks is completely gone before you want to resume your normal breath. It's good to do it while there's still a little cushion of air inside your mouth, and that will help to, as I said, equalize the airspeed and the pressure that's coming from behind. And this is where many flutists fall by the wayside. It takes a lot of um, persistence. Uh, you reach a lot of plateaus where it doesn't seem to get better, but these plateaus just need to be crossed. Um, and as I say, the investment of time 10 to 15 minutes a day will bring you forward. Approaching the final phases of learning circular breathing, you'll want to experiment with exactly how long you'll want your cycles to be of expansion and then normal breathing. As I said, at the beginning, it's uh, not a good idea to try to do too much at once. It's also flattering and a better idea if you try it on a trill. <laughs> then the color changes and the little glitches are not so apparent. And it makes the practicing a little bit more easier and fluid. I have an exercise, as I just demonstrated, that goes through the harmonic series using trills and circular breathing. Etc. and on down to the two low C sharp D trill. That's one good way of sort of bringing circular breathing into your normal daily warm-up routine. And for further refinements, it's, um, it's a good idea, uh, again, to start on perhaps uh, a medium to high note, perhaps a C. experiment which part of your tongue is actually helping to push the air out. If you move the front of the tongue too much, as I mentioned before, you'll hear the color change that happens. However, if you use more of the very relaxed um, back part of your throat, Not only will your sound be better, but the, um, the changeover in the circular breathing will be less apparent. People often ask me how long I can circular breathe, 
how long it can make a phrase going without taking a breath. A lot of that depends on your physical condition and it depends on the dryness of the air. Uh, if you go on long enough, your lips will eventually dry out and you need to take a little break to, to wet them or to take a quick inhalation. Robert Dick also speaks about long-scale inhalations and exhalations. Um, he mentioned to me in a lesson once about, um, theoretically, it's, it's circular breathing offers the possibility of a flutist always playing, completely expanded, with maximum resonance in the rib cage and their upper body. But in the long run, that's very tiring for a human being to do. The human body is used to making these changes, uh, these expansions and slight contractions. And what you do over a long period of circular breathing, say over a couple of minutes, is you keep expanded and then you let things go a little bit. You relax the upper body and let some of the air out and then slowly, slowly bring it up again. Several times in the course of this video I've mentioned Robert Dick. I can highly recommend his book, Circular Breathing for Flutists. This book was my companion for the months that it took me to learn circular breathing, and it's also been my companion through the years that I've been teaching circular breathing. And I hope you've enjoyed this and have learned, and it has given you some motivation to persevere in your goal to circular breathe on the flute.